Matt and Va. Wait, wrong country. Bored that. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Wales. Welcome to my first week as a PhD student. Let's go to work. Right, so I've gone into the office now. It is actually really early. I'm really early for my first day. It's quarter to nine in the morning. I'm the first one in the office. And the reason I've come in so early is because there's four of us that have been assigned to this office, four new PhD students. But there's an existing postdoc and some PhD students who were in here before, and some of them haven't quite left yet. I know that this desk in the corner here, the one I'm sitting at now, is free, which is why I came in early to make sure I got it so I didn't have to deal with any sort of, oh, is this my desk? Is this not my desk? This is now my desk. It's good. I'll give you a quick tour before anyone else shows up. So this is my desk. It has uh, currently got bugger all on it. That's just anti-perspirant. Um, yeah, this is the rest of the office. So there's one desk there to my right, and then three over in the back box. This one is the, this is the worst desk. Um, is there, There's no computer on it. There's no monitor on it or anything. This is probably the best one. They've clearly got a nice monitor. It's been paid for by funding. Got a nicer chair. So did they. But yeah, so that's the office. There's going to be five of us in here, four new PhD students, and I believe a postdoc. Um, and it's it's good. It's a good size office. So I'm just walk past the door. Um, yeah, I I'm going to get the desk sort of set up, and then I need to drop off a form to sort of. It's my essentially my contract for being a graduate demonstrator for a module. Because if that's handed in and my right to work has come through this morning, then I'm also going to be doing some lab demonstrating. If not, I'm reading a lot of review papers today as my first day because my supervisor is still away in the Brecon Beacons. Um, so I mean, we're here tomorrow. Let's get this set up. Okay, so it turns out I'm really out of practice at vlogging. Um, it is now the um, end of the day, pretty much, and I have uh, vlogged very little today. Basically, I got completely swept up in everything. So I had, like, there's, like, mandatory training you have to do when you start a PhD, you know, EDI training for the 15 millionth time, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and then I got swept up this afternoon in doing lab demonstrating for a second-year computing, second-year physics computing lab, which is really interesting. Uh, and time kind of flew by, but it does mean I actually have done no PhD work today. I have not read a paper. I have not done anything like that. So that's the first thing I'm trying to do tomorrow. But tomorrow's not going to be a lot of training, I think. I had forgotten quite how much onboarding you have to do when you start at a new university. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I am quite tired. I got my flu vaccination on Saturday, and it's still kind of... Um, hit me. So like, I was very much unwell on Saturday and I'm still a bit exhausted from it. So I think like the flu vaccination on top of first day at work and everything, it's just left me a bit knackered. So I'm going to play some video games for a bit, watch some TV, go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow when I will try and be better at vlogging. Got a lovely rainbow on the way to work today. That's really nice. Well, honey, it got a bit wet. That rainbow was a sign of things to come, apparently. I can't really see. Okay, now that I can see again, what are we doing today? Well, so it's day two of my PhD and my supervisor is back today. So at 10 o'clock this morning, I'm having my first supervisor meeting. This will be an opportunity to go through, sort of, go through exactly what the project is gonna be, the vague plan for the next wee while, a sort of starting point and probably a discussion on where my interests really lie to see how we could guide this project going forward. One thing we have discovered though is that I'm still a human peanut and that I forgot my laptop charger. So yeah, my heart is having to bring that to me. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Charge required. You know, between cycling to work and the fact that my office is on the third floor, how am I going to get really fit during this? <laughs> All right, first uh, supervisor meeting done. Um, I realize I actually haven't said I'm doing a PhD at Cardiff University. I've now moved to Wales. I don't know if I said that yesterday. Um, so my PhD focuses on, well, it's going to focus 
on what's called the Serpent Galactic Medium, so all the gaseous stuff in the halo around the galaxy. So I've just had my first supervisor meeting, and that went really well. Um, it's actually really exciting to be getting started on this now. Um, I'm back in the office. I'm still the only person in my office today. I saw one other guy, but he prefers to work in the library. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm in the office on my own. Yeah, so out of that meeting, basically, I have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, galaxies are not a thing I've overly looked at during my undergrad. They're a thing I'm going to have to learn a lot about to be able to do a PhD studying galaxies and doing galaxy simulations. So the plan for today, there's some uh, review papers that I need to have a look through. I'm going to be getting sent some more review papers by my supervisor, um, either later today or tomorrow, um, just to get me caught up on stuff, because, like I said, a lot of galaxy stuff is going to be new to me. And then this afternoon, one of the other PhD students in the group is going to hopefully get me partially set up on the university clusters because I don't want to run everything on my laptop. Ideally, we want to be running stuff on the university's clusters because they won't cry when I turn on magnetic fields. Well, they might, just not too much. So fast forward a few hours later, I'm at home, had dinner, it was good. I still have done no science, but I am at least set up on the computers. Uh, that all worked, we didn't have to get IT involved, which is really helpful. Uh, so dinner's now been had, and we're about to head out to the cinema, to use our cinema cards for the first time, um, to finally go and see Oppenheimer, which came out in like, July. <laughs> yes, it's now October. <laughs> the last time they are showing it in the cinema here in Cardiff, um, is Sunday, and we can't make that showing. So we're going tonight. Normally we'd go dancing tonight, but you know, cinema. <laughs> dancing next week. Good morning, folks. Uh, yeah, it's it's Wednesday, day three of my first week officially as a PhD student. Um, Oppenheimer last night. It was really good. I am so glad to finally seen it. Um, yes, yeah, so my partner and I we uh, we we decided to get cinema cards for our local uh, well for one of the local cinemas. Um, basically, the the biggest one that's there. We decided to get um, got a cinema card for, and we can go to the cinema as much as we want, essentially. But yeah, all oh, power. Oh my god, it was so good. Like. I can understand why people have raved about it. Um, very American. Very much American. I, mean, this is, I don't care about this. Is not gonna, if you care about spoilers, skip this section of the, of the vlog. But realistically, I'm watching this in October. Uh, the movie came out in July. So I think I'm probably safe. For those who are unaware, Oppenheimer is a movie about Robert Oppenheimer. Shut up, smart meter. Movie about Robert Oppenheimer, known colloquially as the father of the atomic bomb. The whole movie centers on him, a guy called Louis Strauss, um, and how basically Strauss tries to destroy Oppenheimer and end up getting the torpedo game himself. Anyway, point is, the movie was very good, but took a very American standpoint to the scientists, specifically to Oppenheimer. The reason I'm describing it as a very American standpoint is that they've set him up as, as the hero, as the guy. Like, I know that he's colloquially known as father of the atomic bomb, but that's not how science works. It's not how science worked then. It's not how science works now. It's very much science is a collaborative thing. I don't know. It just doesn't. I, I don't. It just doesn't quite sit right with me. I understand why they chose to portray it that way. I just feel like it's a bit of a misrepresentation of how science works. On the whole, though, I really enjoyed the movie. Like it is really well done. The music is brilliant. Anyway, enough about Oppenheimer, what about today? It is Wednesday, it is day three of the PhD, and I am finally going to do some science. Last couple of days I have done mandatory training, lab demonstrations, more mandatory training, a supervisor meeting, more, more mandatory training, um, and then spent a good while yesterday getting set up on the computers. So, today I finally get to do some science, and I'm going to be doing 
like I'm going to be reading review papers. I've also got a few other meetings and such that I will bring you guys as much along to as possible. I don't think I'm going to take you into the meetings, but I can certainly tell you more about them and I will try and be better about the whole vlogging thing. So, Wednesday. Let's go. I'm now out of the office for a bit just because I need a little bit of time not looking at a screen. It's something that I, I look at screens a lot, but when you're focusing on text for a long time and actually having to understand what it says, like taking taking a break is a good thing. Um, I don't really know where the best place to start to walk around in the department yet, so I thought it's probably going to be outside, get some fresh air, do some wee bit of exercise as well, just take a wee walk. Um, so yeah, what have I been up to? I've been largely reading one paper today. Um, it feels good to actually be reading some science stuff to me, working through what's called a review paper. So this is a paper that's been written about a topic, in this case, the circumgalactic medium, the area that I'm studying, and essentially going through what is the current state of research. In this case, looking at it from both an observational point of view, using telescopes and other detectors, as well as from a simulations point of view, which is great because I do simulations. Mm -hmm. This is really useful. A lot of review papers will only look at it from an observation side or only from a simulation side, and these aren't great, unless they're looking at something in particular. Like I'm gonna read one that talks about um, like the limitations of our current modeling of the circumgalactic medium. Like That is great. It's a review of the limitations of our observations. That's all really good, we need to know that stuff and it's good to have a brief, um, well, somewhat brief, overview of that. Rather than having to go and find these 50 papers myself and get the summary of them myself, I can read a summary article or a review article. It would also appear that I decided to walk down the one street with somebody using a petrol, like, strimmer or lawnmower or something or other. It's really loud. I apologise. Now, it's a pretty reasonable question to ask is, why would I start doing a PhD in a topic I don't know that much about? Firstly, PhD is about learning something very in-depth that nobody knows. So that's not too much of a problem. But to choose something that I've not studied really at all in my undergrad, you might be wondering why. If you've been here for a while, you'll know that I did my master's project in star formation and I was looking for a lot of star formation related um, PhD projects. I didn't get any of them, but galaxy simulations and looking at galaxy evolution is fundamentally very similar work to doing star formation simulations. So doing simulations of physics, turning physics into maths, into code, and looking at the evolution of systems that way. Fundamentally that is very similar work. So I started looking at galaxy simulations as well, and that was the position I got offered. It's really interesting. I just have a lot of learning to do before I can do anything particularly useful in this area. At the same time, if I'd done a star formation PhD, I'd probably be doing something a bit different to what I did for my master's project and still have this massive steep learning curve to go all over again. So realistically, at the PhD, everyone knows nothing. A couple hours later, that's me back in the house. After that walk, we had a seminar, the Astro Seminar, which is normally once a week, I think. Maybe it's once a fortnight, I'm not sure. Um, essentially, a researcher from another institution gives a talk. This time it was done on Zoom with an academic working in Canada. He was talking about galaxy quenching. So this is when a galaxy goes from forming stars to not forming stars, and the gas, they get rid of all the gas. It's not 100% clear how that process works. Obviously, that's why we're investigating it. Since it's galaxy evolution related, it is somewhat related to what I'm doing, and there was mention of the circumgalactic medium, but it's a bit different to me because he's doing observations, not simulations, which is fair. <laughs> now that I'm back, I've had dinner, and I'm now away to stream on Twitch. If you don't know, I stream on Twitch. Sometimes I do science communication stuff, sometimes I do Pomodoro study streams, but tonight I'm just gonna have a chat with the community and stream some space engineers. So I'm gonna get that set up because I should be live at most eight minutes from now. I said I was going live between seven and half seven, it's 7.22, and this camera is what I use for streaming, so I need to, you know, set that up. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, that's better. Um, yeah, so, 
Good morning, it's Thursday. Um, I'm back in PhD office this morning. This isn't gonna be a thing every week. I'm gonna do a lot of work in the office, but I am gonna do a bit of hybrid working, essentially, throughout my PhD, because there's just gonna be some days where it's better to be at home. It's also better for doing study streams if I can be at home, because I don't think my PhD office mates, and I think none of them are here at the minute, but I don't think they would really appreciate me, like, streaming from the office. So, uh, yeah. Maybe if there's a week when I know no one's going to be here, then maybe I could do that, but I think that's unlikely. Um, cool, so, today. Today is, what is today? Today's kind of busy. Um, so, I've got my research group meeting, which normally would be a Wednesday, but today it is a Thursday because my supervisor had a meeting yesterday that was at the same time that she had to go to. So, research group meeting, and that's in about an hour. Um, then there's a weekly journal club, and I'm not sure if I'm going to go to that. I just don't know if the paper's that relevant. Then again, we'll see. I'll see if other people from my group are going. Um, and then this afternoon, there's a meeting to do with the demonstrating stuff, the lab demonstration that I've been doing, um, which is probably largely pointless. But basically, I have three meetings like today that will probably take up a good chunk of my day. So I'm going to try and get some science done like Aside from that, essentially, um, I've got some more papers to go through. Apologies, I'm a little bit red. I've just got home. Um, this evening's been interesting, so apologies I haven't done that much vlogging today. The rest of the day we had some meetings, one about the module that I'm demonstrating for, um, and then I got a bit of help from one of the other PhD students in the group trying to understand what it is I'm supposed to be doing science-wise this week, and we're going to try and fix that tomorrow. Um, basically I was having trouble downloading a package, and then he was explaining how some of the like, analysis scripts work, which is great, like I need to know this stuff. And tomorrow I'm going to try and get it working on my account on the school computers. Then, after work, so I left work a little bit early so that I could get up to one of the other buildings in the main campus um, for something a bit interesting. So, something I have been trying to get back into for a wee while now is Warhammer 40k. Now, I started playing when I was in school. Uh, for those who don't know, Warhammer is a tabletop miniatures war game. Um, and there's a society that plays games of that at Cardiff University. So I was going to there give it a go this evening and oh, it was so much fun. Did a bit of painting, played a game of Kill Team, which is like a sort of small scale game and it was really good. Next week there's another give it a go. I'm not sure if I'll go to that because I've been to there give it a go tonight. Um, but the week after that, proper wargaming starts. So I think I will be going along to that on a Thursday evening. I'm really excited. It was really fun. Oh, I forgot how much I like playing Warhammer. It's just really fun. Yeah, my army is Chaos Space Marines, if you're wondering. Now I'm back, I'm gonna uh, have dinner and then have a chill evening. All right, folks, Friday. It's the last day of the working week, obviously not the last day of the week yet, and I am quite tired. What time is it? Yeah, I am, you know, half an hour later than I intended to be. I slept in a little bit till half past seven, which is like also not even sleeping that much, but. I need to get breakfast and then I need to get out to work. So today the plan is I've got a load of stuff I want to get done. I don't think I have any meetings today, which is good. The plan is I'm gonna read some papers and I'm gonna try and get some of these analysis tools that exist to work on my account on the university's computers. So that's that's the plan. Uh, I think I just need to figure out how to tell the computer this is where this package is because it's just saying, we don't know where this thing is, so I, I just need to figure that out, which shouldn't be too hard, but I'll, I'll need to have a look online, see if I can figure it out. I may need to ask somebody, but it's not the end of the world, ultimately. I would say to actually get some work done. Um, I actually feel like I'm doing some science as opposed to just reading papers and struggling with IT. I'm also going to try and speak to the director of postgrad research in the department because I need to figure out how I get them to buy me various bits of technology um, from the budget assigned to me and I also need to figure out how um, how I get like assessed for 
basically my chair is shit. Well, it's, it's not that it's a bad chair. It's just a bad chair for me. And it's been four days. My back already hurts. So I need to speak to them about how I get a better chair, essentially. So among other things, like I need a wrist rest and things like that as well. But I think I need to speak to him to find out how I do that because it's not entirely clear. But yeah, last night was really fun. Um, I was just, like I said, I went along to, uh, I went along to Crits, which is the Cardiff Regular Irregular Tabletop Society. They have the cutest um, society logo, which is a, it's a little sleeping dragon um, on top of D20 dice, or die, I guess. Um, oh, it's so cute. I'll, I'll put it on screen now. It's so freaking cute. Um, yeah, so that was really fun. Um, I've missed Warhammer. <laughs> Pop is, I really missed. I've, I've forgotten how much I liked it. Like, I like playing D&D as well. Um, I like playing Dungeons and Dragons as well. But uh, I was on D Dungeons and Dragons online. And the whole, like, theatre of the mind thing, imagining what's going on, uh, especially in combat, I've always found a bit... I don't know, not boring, but like less engaging. And that's the thing you don't really have to do in Warhammer because you've got your models on the table and they are like, like yeah, you have to imagine the actual fighting bit, but you can see where they are, you can see the terrain and like it's, I don't know, I, I find it more engaging. So yeah, I'm really excited to get back into Warhammer and uh, go along to the Wargaming stuff in a couple of weeks. So. I mean, I'm planning for this to roughly be a once every two weeks sort of vlog. So in a couple of weeks, that so two weeks from now, when I'm filming the next one of these, that will be the first um, weekly wargaming night for Chris. So you'll probably see some of that. But now that I need to have breakfast and I need to get my ass out the door and into work because, you know, science needs to happen. I've been working for about an hour. I've got the stuff working. I've run some initial sort of test analysis scripts on some data that I've been given access to and like, it's really cool. So what we're looking at here is a galaxy's number density of hydrogen. So basically how much hydrogen have we got in a given place? And it's in a log scale, so you get 10 to minus four, then 10 to minus three, 10 to minus two, 10 to minus one. So essentially red is really, really low density. This is 10 times that density, this is 10, this is 100 times that red density, this is 1000 times that red density. So we've got a load of neutral hydrogen here in the middle, a, quite a bit here, and then much less in the red areas around the outside. And then we get on to temperature, where this is a million Kelvin, this is 100,000 Kelvin, and this is 10,000 Kelvin. So we've got some cool gas here, and then in these really under dense bits, the bits that are red in here where they're under dense, this is really hot. This is like a 10 to the 6 Kelvin. This is what we call the hot gas, the hot phase of the circumgalactic medium. And oh, these, these plots are really cool. Now that I've got these running, I'm gonna try and take a little bit of a break from trying to run these analysis scripts and read a few more of these review papers, try and get a better grounding in the topic. And then I'll speak to other people in the group later and figure out exactly what I should be trying to do at the minute, because it's not entirely clear to me what's a good use of my time, essentially. All right, I've just had lunch. Um, I'm definitely making progress. I've got those simulations working and now I've been doing some reading on a paper talking about like the key physical processes inside the circumgalactic medium, which is, you know, an important thing for me, for me to understand. Basically, the problem we have with the circumgalactic medium is that it is very, very large, like hundreds of kiloparsecs in size. Bear in mind, a parsec is three light years and we're talking hundreds of thousands of those. Um, so yeah, it's very big and there's a lot of things that happen in the circumgalactic medium that happen on very small scales. Things like, um, so the circumgalactic medium is something we call multiphase, so it's got like hot gas and cold gas and sort of things, intermediate gas. A lot of the interactions happen at resolutions below what we can simulate easily when we're dealing with a large scale simulation. And that's some of the challenges we're facing. And that's what this paper and another one that I'm going to read are kind of talking about is what we can do now and what the challenges are going forwards and how we can maybe try and resolve them. And I guess part of my PhD is going to be trying to resolve them. Morning. Uh, right. It's Saturday, last 
That's gonna last day. No, it's not. Tomorrow's the last day of the week. But it's Saturday anyway. Sorry I didn't do much filming yesterday. I just got my car up and everything I was doing and completely forgot. Um, went to the pub after work, which was really nice. Um, the physics department goes to this one pub just off Queen Street in Cardiff, which is it's it's really nice. It's a fairly like small pub, not too expensive, and. Yeah, we basically take over the upstairs on a Friday evening, which is great, good fun. Now it's Saturday morning and I am editing. It's basically, it's, this week's been a bit of a roller coaster and I haven't been able to actually do a lot of editing. What I'm currently working on is finishing off the video about why academics aren't the most important thing at university. Um, so that should be done hopefully within the next sort of half hour, 45 minutes. I'm just about to shove in all the graphics to the music and everything. Then I'm hopefully gonna get some shorts pulled out of the first episode of the Unstable Fluid podcast and then make a start on editing this video, this uh, this PhD vlog. So I'm gonna start on like the Monday to Friday stuff and hopefully try and piece that together into something somewhat engaging. Okay, you're a little bit closer now because I've got a different lens on the camera because I was using that for it being up on this, um, on the desk clamp. Um, right, video about academics at university and why they're not the most important thing is now finished. It is uploaded to YouTube and it is scheduled for Wednesday next week. So that video is out by the time you're watching this. So if you haven't seen that, go watch it. It'll be in the top right hand corner. Maybe that one, maybe that one. I never know which where it is. I also got a little bit distracted for a wee while because I uh, got reminded that the soundtrack for the Star Trek Exchange New Worlds musical episode is freaking amazing. Uh, it is way better than it has any right to be. I love it. Especially the final, especially the finale and Christina Chong's solo number. They're just, ah, they're so good. So we're finishing off the week. It's now Sunday. Uh, last night went really well. We had a housewarming party, had some friends over, some people from my physics gr uh, research group, a friend Kat from Cat Does Maths, who have, we have a podcast, link in the description, um, and some people from my partner's work. Uh, it was really nice, nice chill evening, many beers, few whiskeys, and uh, yeah, it's Sunday, I'm gonna get onto editing now, and tonight I'm gonna go and watch the new film, The Creator. There'll be a thing in the end of the screen basically saying what I thought of it, but I'm really excited. It's like a new sci-fi IP, like, it's not based on Star Wars or Star Trek or some other existing intellectual property. I'm just really excited to see how it's done. And then I also found out it's been filmed with like the Sony FX3, which is like it's a four thousand pound camera, and I made an entire cinema, like cinema feature length film with it. I'm like, okay, that's possible now. It makes me feel very inadequate in my filmmaking, but it's fine. I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. I hope you very much enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, share it with a friend, subscribe if you're not already, hit the bell icon, all that stuff. I'd really love it if these vlogs take off because I want to share what it's like doing a PhD in astrophysics with as many people as possible. So I'll see you all in a couple of weeks for another PhD vlog and next week for a science video. See ya. Thank you.